the most shocking moment of the last episode of the House of the Dragon was when Vagar ended the life of Lucerys Falerion. That event was what actually started the Dance of the Dragons. The greatest conflict in the history of Westeros. An intra-family conflict for control of the Iron Throne. But looking back on the events of that day, we can see that there is no one else to blame for what happened, other than the Queen herself. Rhaenyra Targaryen In this video I will be explaining why Rhaenyra is to blame for what happened to Lucerys. If you want to know everything related to the Game of Thrones universe, the House of the Dragon, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Welcome to the Three-Eyed Raven. Before we start with this review, if you want to participate in our Fonka Pops giveaway and the book Fire and Blood, from which the House of the Dragon was adapted, you just have to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and tell us which character you think should be king, and why. The winner will be revealed on November 20th. This last episode of the House of the Dragon opens with Rhaenyra talking to Luke. She explains to him that she was not prepared to become queen, but that it is a duty she has, and she must do it. Of course, these words were a foreshadowing of what would happen later, for although she was crowned, she did not know how to react as queen. Her emotions clouded her judgment. But what were those mistakes that led Lucerys into the mouth of the ancient dragon? The first reason why Rhaenyra is to blame for what happened, is that after having a conflict in King's Landing over the legitimacy of her children, instead of staying close to her father, who was obviously in his last moments of life, she decided to take refuge in Dragonstone. By turning away from the King's Council and the Red Keep, she ended up leaving the way clear for the Hightowers for their ascension. This was the princess's first big mistake. Otto wasted no time, and created a plan to have his grandson crowned. Apparently, Rhaenyra thought that she would be accepted as queen, as several families had already sworn allegiance to her name. But Rhaenys Targaryen explains to her what happened. She explains how the Hightowers usurped the throne, and how Alicent has tried to add her to her side. This is so hard for Rhaenyra, that her body does not resist, and she goes into early labor. Apparently Rhaenyra was hoping that her friend would accept her as queen. Daemon understands what is happening, and begins to enlist all his men, but Rhaenyra stops him. She does not want Daemon to make decisions while she is delivering the baby. This is the second mistake, as it allows the Hightowers to take a better position. Rhaenyra's lack of action in the early hours has led the Hightowers to make alliances with the people who once swore allegiance to the Queen. After Rhaenyra is crowned, then she begins to see who her allies are. We must take into account that the Hightowers are already several days ahead of her, since they kept the loss of the King a secret. What Rhaenyra assimilated as the best option for her, turns out to be the worst. Rhaenyra decides to verify who are the people who will fight for her, but the arrival of the Royal Guard is announced. Otto Hightower comes to negotiate, by orders of King Aegon. We could think that this was the end for Otto, since he would obviously be declared a traitor to the crown, and consequently he is supposed to lose his life there. Damon was ready to use the Dark Sister, but Otto gives Rhaenyra a message from Alicent. A piece of paper from a story she used to read to her in childhood, when they were best friends. Rhaenyra begins to cry, because she is emotionally affected, and cannot make a rational decision at that moment. Rhaenyra asks Otto for some time to think things over. We can see that Daemon reacts surprised, because he can't believe Rhaenyra is acting that way. Worse, she starts telling Daemon about the prophecy, dreams and visions that the prince considers absurd. Daemon is frustrated, because he feels that Rhaenyra has become what Viserys was. Or at least she is acting the same way. She is being manipulated by the Hightowers, as the king was manipulated as well. As Daemon rightly said, the queen's job is to put an end to all rebellions. The passive attitude at the most critical moment, makes Rhaenyra's side look weak. While Rhaenyra is thinking about the vision of Aegon the Conqueror, 
in the danger approaching from the north, she is not realizing that her throne is being stolen in front of her eyes. But none of Rhaenyra's decisions were as misguided as sending her sons as messengers to confirm whether the alliances were still intact. Rhaenyra has not realized that the Greens are already acting in war mode, and that by sending her children to places where they might change their allegiance, it puts them in great danger. It is illogical to think that Rhaenyra would send her 13-year-old son on a small dragon to Storm's End. Perhaps Rhaenyra sends them, because she remembers the time she asked Viserys to go to Dragonstone, but Viserys wouldn't let her. Lucerys was terrified, not only because of the idea of going to Storm's End alone, but because he would be the next heir in Driftmark. Lucerys was just a boy, and he was sent there alone. The rest is history. Eamon had arrived before Lucerys. The fact that Rhaenyra had betrothed Luke also worked against him. If only he had offered himself as husband to one of Boros Baratheon's daughters, the story would have been different. Alliances in wartime often change, but Rhaenyra was too inexperienced to know that. Luke ends up in Vagar's mouth, because Rhaenyra continued to maintain a passive attitude. She thought that everything would be fine, and that she would be accepted as queen. Only Damon saw that the war had really started, and that Rhaenyra was not taking the right measures. At the end of the day, the only one responsible for Luke's loss is Rhaenyra Targaryen. She is responsible for sending a 13-year-old boy, in the middle of a military conflict, to seek alliances against an usurper king. It's pretty clear why Damon is the one to break the news to Rhaenyra. Beyond the fact that he is now her husband, it is news that confirms all the ideas that Damon had. It is then when Rhaenyra understands that by not listening to the prince and attacking quickly, her son has lost his life. This completely changes the dynamic between Damon and Rhaenyra. In this last episode, we saw how there was a struggle for power between them. Rhaenyra sought to keep the peace, but now, all will to keep the kingdom united and fulfill the prophecies, is gone. The reality is that Luke has lost his life, and Daemon was not listened to. Rhaenyra must understand that Daemon is the most combat experienced person she knows, and he is the one who must make these military decisions. Even if it means King's Landing ends in ashes. Dreams didn't make them kings, dragons did. And for more videos with theories, news, and stories from the Game of Thrones universe and the House of the Dragon, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. You're on, the Three-Eyed Raven.